Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to look at a recent eBay purchase I made. This is a circa 1980s, like 1982, Hewlett Packard 3478A benchtop multimeter. Uh, this is a five and a half digit multimeter. It is or was considered a piece of lab grade equipment. They're, these are very rugged, they're nice and accurate, easy to use. A uh, little old. You know, this is pushing 82, 92, uh, pushing 40 years, but you know, it's in really good condition. Some of the nice things about it, it does AC and DC volts and amps. It will do two wire and four wire ohms measurements. That's all it does. Uh, there's no capacitance, there's no diode test, no temperature, no frequency, none of that other stuff. Just a good, solid, basic precision multimeter. We've got two sets of inputs. We've got inputs on the front. The standard inputs are that's your low and high, your sort of common, and your either voltage or amp. The wires over here are for doing four wire resistance measurement. So if you put a set of Kelvin leads on there, you can do four wire resistance measurements. It has GPIB, that's the uh, also known as HPIB, the general purpose interface bus. If we take a look around the back here, you see we've got a GPIB port back here. Um, we've got five volt out for a measurement complete signal. There's also an external trigger in, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Uh, we also have a set of inputs around the back here. Uh, it's the same inputs that are on the front, so you can do volts and amps. Actually, I don't think you can do amps on this. You can do volts and you can do four wire, uh, two wire or four wire resistance. So this was good if this was racked somewhere and it was being dedicated to measuring sort of one thing in particular. Um, set of switches on the back here for setting the GPIB bus. If you don't know what GPIB is, GPIB was, or HPIB was, a bus system to allow you to interconnect measurement equipment and you could then write code and remote, you know, remote monitor the uh, measurements you were getting from it. So like I said, this is about 40 years old. But what's nice about these is you can pick them up relatively cheap. This is the second one of these I have. I'll show you the first one in a, in a few minutes. I picked this up with shipping for like $120. So, you know, finding a bench top five and a half digit meter for a hundred bucks these days is not easy to do. Like I said, big advantage to these is that HP made really good measurement equipment. This is in a real solid case. Like they hold up really well. Even the ones that look beat up usually work really well. They hold their calibration very nicely over time. This one didn't come with one, but my other meter I, I got did actually come with a calibration certificate when I got it. So, you know, that's sort of my meter that I, I, I base everything against. If I go and want to recalibrate something, I recalibrate it against that meter. So right now it's in DC volts range, soft touch buttons. We can go to AC and we can go to AC, DC and AC amps. It does auto ranging, but you can manually set the range if you want. And you can you can step through ranges that are there. You can choose how many digits of accuracy you want to see. We come here and say three, so we can come down to, to make it a three and a half digit meter. And update rate is really pretty fast. Uh, four and a half, five and a half digits. Uh, there's a reset button, then that just resets and tests everything. And we can see what the HPIB address is. So this particular device has an address of 22 on it. There's a front panel switch to switch between the front and rear test sockets. Uh, key, the button cap is missing from this. I'm going to have to see if I can source one of those. Um, I don't plan to use the rear inputs on this anyway, so it's not a problem. My other meter does have the button on it, and I keep a set of four-wire resistance uh, clips plugged into the back of it at all times, and I use that for whatever resistance measurement I want to do. So let's take a quick look. I'll just throw a couple, a couple values up on here just to show it. I'm going to use my little, my two and a half volt reference that I made. This is based around the max. 6325 voltage reference chip. 
and if I put between uh, 9 and 20 volts in, I get a nice stable 2.5 volts out. So let's uh, let's have a look and 2.5 and 5.7 millivolts. It's pretty good. Pretty sure if I go and I look, that is that is within that is within spec for it. And I can plug it into my small bench supply I have up here. This I have set for for five volts and for plus and minus 15 volts. And there's 15 positive and 15 negative. It's a volt amp meter. There's not a lot super special about it. Um, but like I said, it is accurate. Um, and they are quite affordable. So if you were looking for a, a bench top meter and you didn't want to spend a lot of money and get something really good, you can look for one of these HP meters. So I'm going to turn it off. Let's take a little peek inside. It's always really nice to look at HP's equipment. Um, they just, their stuff always looks it's nice to look at. Top just unscrews and comes off. And this is the inside. We've got transformer up here. Uh, this is a battery. Um, so this battery is to power is to keep the calibration in it. Uh, this 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 meter doesn't have any uh, manual calibration adjustments. It's all done digitally, and it's stored in a battery backed RAM. And so the cell uh, powers that. I forgot which chip. I th think it's over here. I'm not sure. The memory chip. These batteries last a long, long time. Um, my other meter, I replaced the battery in it. This one, since I've gotten it, I haven't gone in and replaced the battery, just because I haven't, I haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, replacing the battery is sort of a tricky thing. Uh, when you take the battery out, you lose the calibration, and unless you have the calibration backed up, uh, which I have done through the GPIB port, then you wind up with an uncalibrated instrument. Uh, the other way to change the battery is you need to have the unit powered. There's three ways to do it. You can just pull it out, make sure you have backed up the calibration settings, and then restore them. Uh, you can put a 3-volt source, like another battery, uh, in parallel with the battery that you're taking out and replacing to maintain that. Or you can replace the battery with the unit plugged in, which is what I did with the other one. It's not really recommended. Uh, you need to have like an un you need to have like a floating ground soldering iron and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's 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 a it's a little bit of a chore, but it's not too bad to do. But you put another battery in, and you're probably good for another 20 years with it. I think I said these batteries seem to last uh, pretty much forever. But that's what that is. That's the backup battery. If we look over here, this unit's got an interesting little bit of stuff going on here. If you look, you can see someone has put a chip. They've mounted it in a wire wrap socket and soldered it to a chip on the board to get power to it. And if we look where it's wired, we can see that it goes to this uh, trigger port in the back. And there's a pin down here on the circuit board, which is the external trigger in. And uh, so what someone has done with this is they've replaced the coax connector. Let's take a look back here. They replaced the coax connector with, let me get the light to hit it, um, a triax connector. So instead of it just being one center lead, we've got two here. And typically, those cables are used for carrying a balanced signal. And so if we look at the if we look at this chip in here, we should be able to see the chip is a 5400. And if you look up that, you'll see that the 5400 is actually a military grade 
7400 uh, quad NAND gate chip and what they've done is they've wired the the balanced inputs into two of the gates and they've taken the output of that and sent it back to the to the main board so they could use the balanced trigger signal interesting little modification and hack um, clever way to get power to the chip just by grabbing uh, VCC and ground off of an existing chip there I'm gonna assume it works don't know don't really care I'm not gonna be externally triggering it but that was interesting to see in there and one thing I have done with this uh, since I got it is I replaced the rifle caps that were in it uh, if we look at those that I pulled out I've got them over here and if we see these they're not in terrible shape but they've got hairline cracks along them they're old and they're basically they're basically a puff of magic smoke waiting to happen so I took those out and replaced them and if you look here you can see there's two of the chips down here which are by the power switch and there's two back here just under the GPIB cable there's two of them there so those were the four rifle caps and I we yanked those out and put some new ones in so once I replace the battery in this this meter is probably good for the next 20 plus years or so um, but like all HP stuff from that era, uh, it's gorgeous construction. Um, the board is very nicely marked. I mean, it tells us down here, if we look, this tells us, you know, AC converter. If we look down here, we can see it, it tells us that it's the, um, is that the current sense or the ohms? That's the ohm sensing. You know, various sections of the board are, are marked with what they are. There's the ohms converter. So, just a nicely done piece of equipment. And that's about it as far as for, for, for looking inside of it. And if you look down this end, you can see that's the liquid crystal display, ribbon cable going to that. And part of the front end, and this big chip thing here, I think, is part of HP's custom uh, custom logic that they put on here. But really solid, solidly constructed. Um, you know, you're not gonna not gonna easily destroy this. But just for the sake of completeness. Let me show you my other 3478A. This is the first one I got. Um, you know, looks much the same. For this on the back, this still has the original coax connector. So nobody uh, quote unquote upgraded this one. And if we uh, so this is, I think, this is an earlier revision. If we look inside here, you see it looks much the same. Uh, this is the battery, this is the new battery that I put in when I got this a couple years back. Uh, if we look down in the corner here, we can see the, we can see the rifle caps down in there. And on this one, the caps weren't on, the other set of caps weren't on the motherboard but they were physically soldered to the switch, which is here. So I had to take off this side and take off this um, transistor. And there was real thick uh, shrink wrap around there I had to cut and then solder the new caps in place around there, put that shrink wrap back. And then I wrapped it with some good flexible uh, Insulating tape there to hold it all together. So That's in good shape, but 
Definitely an older revision. Uh, you can read some of the markings on here a little bit better. Um, but yeah, this is a revision. So if we look down in here, this is a revision B. And this one is a, yeah. This one is a revision C. So this is a little bit newer. Uh, I can find one of these chips, dates on the chips, just to get an idea here. Um, let's see. Here's my little magnifier. Uh, 82. Yeah, I think they're both from around the same time, but this is this is a one revision before. Um, one of the differences is if you boot them up, not that it's a big deal, but this one when you boot it up, this goes through the self-test. And it shows you what the GPIB address is right away. And the other one, when you boot it up, doesn't show you the GPIB address, but you can, you can always hit the, the address, address button to see what that is. So that's the, uh, that's the 3478A. Um, there's certainly newer, sexier pieces of benchtop metering available. And one of the main complaints about these is the LCD display. It is unfortunately not a backlit display. So if you have poor lighting on your bench, the display can be hard to read. Uh, some people have gone in and, and added a backlight to it or replaced them with LEDs. Um, it's a big project, so unless it's really a problem for you, there's no, no real reason to go in and do that. But like I said, if you have good, good lighting, display is perfect, perfectly readable. And I think that's about it. Like I said, it's a meter. There's not a lot to show with it. They're, in, they're relatively inexpensive. They're accurate. They're built like a tank. Probably outlive, outlive you and I. But not a bad addition to the bench. So I'm going to have the two of these up there. Um, you know, I have a couple different bench meters. I have an old Keefley 179A. Um, I have a Tenma 72 410A. Uh, you know, Keithley is an LED one, so it's a little bit easier to read. The Tenma one is LED. Um, not the best display, but, uh, you know, that does a few other things on it. Uh, that will do diode testing. It'll do transistor HFE, you know. But, you know, I've, I've got other things that can do that. Uh, but I like these. You know, it's a good, you know, it's a good value. Even though they're, they're old, they're still good. HP really built equipment to last like a long time. So if you're looking for a bench meter, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money and you have the space. I mean, you know, it's, it's a little, it's a little on the big side. You, know, you can certainly find bench meters that are smaller now. Like I said, for the price, you can't beat it. All right. That's it for this one. HP 3478A multimeter. Questions, comments, leave them below. Like and subscribe if you're so inclined. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.